Hi and welcome to this lesson for Advanced Higher Biology. In this one we're going to be looking at ion transport pumps moving on from our channel proteins and gated and ligand gated channel proteins from the other day. So what you're expected to know is the difference or what is meant by the electrical potential difference. You need to explain the source of the energy from for ion pumps. You need to be able to describe the action of the sodium transporter pump, including phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. And you need to be able to explain how that sodium potassium pump actually affects the metabolism in, in lots of different organisms. So talking about membrane potential, and you might also hear, that, hear this referred to under a couple of other terms. When we look at the concentration gradient of a particular solute from one side of the membrane to the other, and remember in this case a solute is simply, simply something dissolved within um, the water or fluid surrounding the cell. So that could be in the bloodstream or it could be dissolved in the cytoplasm of the cell itself. So the solute, whatever it is that we're looking at, the concentration gradient of it will be different from one side to the other of the cell membrane and that gives us our concentration gradient. The electrical potential difference is what's created when there's a difference in the electrical charge on either side of the membrane. So similar to how we looked at yesterday with the voltage gated membrane that can cause the conformation of the protein to change. In this case we're just looking at the fact that that is different. If there's one electrical charge on one side to the other. That's an electrical potential difference. So both of those things together combine to create what can be referred to as the membrane potential or and you might also hear it referred to as the electrochemical gradient and that determines the transport of the solute. solute. So it basically how and where that solute is going to move, whether it's going to move through diffusion or active transport and whereabouts in the cell it's going to go. Is it going to go into the cell or is it going to go out of the cell? So concentration gradient and electrical potential difference combining to make up the electrochemical gradient. The ion pump itself, such as this one, the sodium potassium pump, are using the energy from hydrolysis ATP, and that's establishing and maintaining the ion gradients. Remember, hydrolysis of ATP just simply means that we're removing one of the phosphates from ATP. And this sodium potassium pump is going to transport ions against quite a steep concentration gradient and that's using the energy directly from ATP hydrolysis. And it's actively transporting sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions into the cell. We're going to look at how that pump works in just a little bit more detail now. So in the first stage where our pump is open to the inner section of the cell, it's got a high affinity for the sodium ions inside the cell. Therefore, binding is going to occur. So if this is inside the cell and outside the cell, we currently have a high affinity for sodium ions. So binding is going to occur. In the next stage, our pump is going to hydrolyze ATP. So it's removed a phosphate from ATP and attached it onto our protein. As a result, we've got phosphorylation by ATP. So this molecule of phosphate is phosphorylating our protein, which causes a conformational change. So we wind up with a conformational change of the protein and therefore the affinity for the sodium ions has decreased and that re results in the sodium being released outside of the cell. With that change, we therefore have a high affinity for potassium ions outside of the cell. Therefore, binding of potassium is now going to occur. We have dephosphorylation, so our phosphate down here is being removed. Remember, dephosphorylation is also going to change the conformation of the protein. And that allows the protein to open on this side, releasing the potassium ions taken into the cell. And the affinity is going to return to the start. So we go back to the beginning, where you wind up with your sodium ions having high affinity, ATP being hydrolyzed and the phosphate attaching to the protein. The conformational change of that phosphorylation means that the protein opens up on the other side and releases the sodium ions out of the side of the cell, giving us a high affinity for potassium to bind. Dephosphorylation therefore then changes the resulting conformation again and releases the potassium ions back out into the cell. Now there are thousands of different types of cells in which that we can find the sodium potassium pump 
So obviously there's a few there, but almost every single one of most animal cells have got some kind of sodium potassium pump within it. And that accounts for a high proportion of the basal metabol metabolic rate in many organisms. So if you remember from higher, we talked about basal metabolic rate and really just how much ATP organisms are going to need to survive. And this is why it's for the phosphorylation of these particular sodium potassium pumps. The reason they're present in quite so many cells is because they're really important in quite a few different processes. So there's a few that you guys need to know about. One of them is about how we can create the resting potential of the membrane. Um, and that involves um, activity of neurons. And we're going to come on to look at this in a few weeks time. The one we're going to look at just now is how it also helps drive the active transport of glucose through something called the glucose symport. Now this occurs in intestinal epithelial cells, so the cells of the small intestine are moving glucose into the bloodstream. Within those cells, we've got the sodium potassium pump, and what it's doing is it's generating a sodium ion gradient across the plasma membrane. So it's continually pumping those sodium ions out of the cell and creating that sodium gradient. There is a second transport protein, which is this one here. And it carries out something which is referred to as a symport. Now, essentially what that means is that every time sodium is brought in by this protein, transporter protein, glucose is also brought in. So glucose goes in the same direction at the same time. So as a result, what we're able to do is, if this is our small intestine, we need to get glucose into the bloodstream. We're continually pumping that sodium out so that as a result, this protein here, this transporter protein, is going to be activated in order to move both sodium and glucose into the cell at the same time. So sodium ions are going to enter the cell down their concentration gradient. So they're going to go from a high concentration to a low concentration, whereas glucose is being pumped against its concentration gradient. It's going from a low concentration into a high concentration. And that can only happen because of this symport, because those two are going to move together at the same time and in the same direction. So you should be able to explain what is meant by the electrical potential difference, explain where the source of energy for ion pumps are, are coming from, describe the stages in the sodium transporter pump, including phosphorylation and dephosphorylation, and explain how the sodium potassium pump can affect metabolism in different organisms.